Well, it comes down to right now, like what what's the reality? It's like people there people will talk and meme all day long. And what we're gonna do today is kind of go through, you know, just take a just an honest look at it. Looking at it, if you had a standard rig on Ethereum, what are the numbers, right? We'll zoom into these different areas, but I try to you need a you need a baseline, a benchmark in the space. And the benchmark that I'm using today is what I would call an atypical rig. And look at this first space right here at the top. So this is the current situation right now, as it stands in the space with the current price. And the current price is actually even lower than this, I believe, right now. It's about 171, maybe a little less. Um, but if we take the current Ethereum hash rate, which converts to difficulty to keep the block time in, in order, you will get these calculations. So we're and I'm going to show you the tool that I'm using for this. And there's there's various situations when it comes to Ethereum that can occur where like the difficulty bomb goes off and the difficulty goes artificially up is not predicated on the hash rate. But for right now, the difficulty bomb hasn't went off. So the hash rate is effectively setting the difficulty. So this hash rate based on a pool's luck of 100% of getting a block with the amount of hash power that they're sending, you should average out around these rates if that was all constant. Now we all know that the, the constant uh, nature of, of any of the pools, some pools have better luck than others and then they'll have a good month and then a bad month. Um, but for just calculation purposes, let's look at the, the detail here. A seven card optimally configured is about 1050 watts of power you can get it down to about 950 but let's just say that your power is a little higher and if you're paying 12 cents a kilowatt right now you are not profitable right now today for that rig with the current ha eth hash rate and by mind you this eth hash rate was about almost a 300 tera hash it's down about 10 to 12 percent over the last 30 days ethereum's hash rate is actually decreasing right now so even with that decrease of hash rate you are still with this rig um, negative right now because the amount of Ethereum price for the Ethereum that you're earning is not not worth that much. Price matters on that for obvious reasons. Predicated on your hash rate of and what your contribution to that is, and if the pool's at 100%, this is how much Ethereum that you're going to earn over that much time. This, and this is one of, I, I purposely chose one of the the more optimally configured rigs. This doesn't get much better than this, right? A 250 mega hash for about a thousand watts of power, a, t a GTX 1070 optimally configured, even if you knocked off hundred watts here, that is about as optimal as it gets when it comes to a GPU. This is kind of a reflection point that if, if you're paying 12 cents kilowatt on our higher USD, you are, you are definitely negative. You're losing about 33 cents a day. If we look at that same rating, if the, if in a month from now, ETH holds around this relative price and all the, you know, the power and your costs don't change, right? You're paying 12 cents a kilowatt. Your power is still the same output that drops you to about 50 cents a day loss. And you're paying about 38 bucks. Um, you know, you're, you're paying $38 more. You're losing essentially in profit. Like, like the amount of Ethereum that you sell for the $173 will leave you net negative after you pay your power cost, right? That's what it comes down to. It's not this number plus this number. It's actually, you're gonna sell this for this much Ethereum, and then you're gonna be left with still $38 covering internally. And then you times that by how many rigs you have, and you know the story here. And again, this is all predicated on a pool paying out correctly, and that these numbers don't go too, too out of whack when it comes to difficulty, because what happens is the Ethereum difficulty swings up, and then you get less, coin for your current hash power which is right here and it's agnostic to price it doesn't care about what the price is all you care about as a miner at the end well you obviously care about price but what you care about at the miner is how much ethereum are you getting for your hash power right now and if there's a lot of a lot more hash power you're going to be getting less and less but if the ethereum goes up in price it kind of offsets that with a reduction that's going to happen in october we're going to be way, way, way under. So I started looking, doing some analysis here and looking at the basics. Uh, that's that tells a pretty grim story uh, by anybody looking at that. But that's that's a snapshot right now in time based on price and based on current network hash. What we're seeing is this network hash is down almost 11 percent. When the argument was going on with the Ethereum developers and they're like, hey, we reduced the issuance and it still went up like our hash rate kept going. It's because we were always in profitability, right? Profitability was still a thing. When Ethereum goes from $600, or at that time when they did the first uh, issuance reduction, the price was around 400 bucks, And then the price went to 1500 So you were still in profit even though there was a, a decrease, right, in the amount of 
actual Ethereum you got. And then through essentially the last two weeks, we were still close to profitability until it threw up to about around 300 uh, terahash. And it went, and then when the price dropped from 250 down to 170, it went negative, right? Because even at $250 with almost 300 terahash, we were still, it was still like 25 cents. 15 cents, something like that. You were still making money. And it, the people that are still green right now are people that have less cost right now. So this, what this is showing and is on 12, 12 cent kilohash. If you have our 12 cent kilowatt, if you're at six cents, if you're half this, your bill is about $45 a month, right? For this rig. So you'd have a net profit positive, right? And that's why, this is why the price per kilowatt matters. And I know this seems like very obvious stuff, but sometimes people don't see it on a sheet and they don't see it depicted in this particular way. And that's why some of the people have a competitive advantage in the space. Now, there's a whole ROI calculation based on how much does this rig cost and how what's your rate of return to pay off your capital expense, your capital expenditure of buying a rig like this. But it comes down to you can keep on a little longer if you're at uh, six cents per kilowatt, right? So that helps tremendously. And we'll, we'll run some numbers and show people where they're at right now. The real effect to us, it's, it acts very strange because where we're tied to price, if this drops at a certain rate, if more and more folks that have lesser power situations get out of it because they just it just gets out of their realm to, to pay uh, for the power and be negative, it's going to swing this entire difficulty down. Or what I'm looking at right now is that at the rate of drop that it's going right now, it could get into a J curve situation. What that means, a J curve is, is it's going to swing down and make like a J. It's going to swing way down. The difficulty is going to go down as, as almost as quick as this price is going to go down. Now that it's dropping 11% over the last month, it's down two and a half percent just today, um, hash rate wise. And it's going to create a situation where we have like this, where if this, if it continues to hold this price, what hash rate, what's the total net hash rate have to get to, to start maintaining any sort of profitability? I took this down to November rates. So if I bring up here, we'll bring up here. If I take this network hash rate, here's your hash rates. If we look at our hash rates over time, and this is, this is the entire Ethereum network. And if we look at hash rates over time here, so 114 tera hash, Right now we're over here and it's like, uh, let me pull this over. We're over here and this, you can see the downward swing since uh, July and uh, the beginning of August. It's um, 253 terahash. It was all the way up to almost 300 terahash a month ago. And what that's done is if, if we come back to November numbers at current price, that's what it's going to take to, to get to profitability. And as this price drops, the hash rate's going to drop. And it's, it's happening right now. People that have big farms and stuff, the big farms will start to come off. A big farm is not going to run it. We're not going to run our big farm. If all coins go down to a profitability level, those rigs got to get shut off because it's just too much. We'll, we'll end up spending all of the any banked currency that we have, right? It's it's better to set on the CapEx at that point and pay the minimalist cost to keep keep operations to a point to when, when it can swing back and back into profitability. You can't, you can't, it's hard to run a large farm at those rates. On a small farm, it, you know, and you have four or five rigs, it all comes down to how much you're investing in it. Or are you just buying the currency because it's cheaper at that point, you know, versus using the wear and tear on the machines. There is a strategy to that. Bottom line, here's here's a, you know, a rate of return if, if it went back to you know, the hash rate. So looking at hash rates and watching hash rates are a key, a, cri a ki critical piece. There's 50 of you guys in here. How many people will probably see this video about probably 900 to a thousand different people of the 900 to a thousand different people, probably half of you guys are mining, right? So the 500 that actually get to see this video and start to strategize around that may start looking at the Ethereum hash rate and see, Hey, based on my setup, does this make sense? If the hash rate goes down to 114. Now what's going to happen is, is when it gets profitable again, you're going to see people start to cover it, right? And say, Hey, wait a minute here. My mining rig can pull in, you know, $118 a day per mining rig. That's what ends up coming down. You know, after October, let's scroll down here, still profitable. $173 Ethereum price, even after the reduction, if the hash rate stayed at more than half off, half of what it is right now, it's still profitable. It's not much profitable, but it, it's still it's still out there. And I'll show you guys how we get to these numbers. If we play this forward over here and we look at, okay, what happens if the price goes up, but the, the hash rate stays 
the same, right? Let's say it has hash rate stays around that 253 tear hash cost are the same. What's that look like? That's 179. That's still better than having the hash rate, right? That's where price ends up being, being king in that. Because what this does is give you a, it gives you a data point. It gives you a data point to sit here and look at in real time, essentially, what's are pretty close to at least a daily snapshot. Like, hey, the Ethereum hash rate's dropping pretty significantly. It's September 11th here. It was uh, 2550 or uh, 250 terahash. Uh, today, it's 253 terahash. If it drops to 220, what's that mean, right? It gives you that, that ability to do the calculation because you can come over here to the Ethereum calculator, which is on etherscan.io and start to type in your situation here and say, you know, if Ethereum's hash rate goes to 210, 209 or 219,000 uh, giga hash, which is 219 tera hash, average block time is about 14.2. I'll show you how to get that. And then let's say that somehow there's a big bull run and it goes to 227, 227, and that's at 227. And then there you go. And then down here, it'll start to calculate where you're at. You're still, you're still in profit, right? For that, you're still at the ninety dollar cost there, but you're you're at thirty one dollars a month. Not not a ton, but that's at two hundred nineteen terahash, and you're at two twenty seven price. But if you go back to this and look, when Ethereum was a couple bucks, you know ten bucks. Look at what the hash rate was seven terahash in January of twenty seventeen. The real kind of uh, resurgence in the space was around March. I made my I made my video of returning back to Bisbee tripping, um, doing da as close to daily videos as I could on March first, twenty seventeen. The Ethereum hash rate at the time was eleven terahash, eleven. So my cost would have been the same, even though we weren't using GTX ten seventies at the time. But we were at about one hundred and seventy five mega hash at about twelve hundred watts at zero point eight cost at the time. Thanks for that, subscribe, sir. Um, and we were at seven, or no, let's do 11. 11,000. Block time was about the same, and we were at about $22. 20, 20 let's just do 25. So if you had a rig at that time, about 148 bucks. That's why $25 Ethereum was profitable when you were mining back in March. It's because the network hash rate was only 11 terahash. Now we're 100x, 200x hash rate for this network and price reciprocated that i think a lot of people know this they just may not watch the numbers in that fashion and i haven't seen a lot of content with actual spreadsheets and the kind of breaking down cost breakdown structures it what's going to happen is if you don't i try not to listen to all the fud there's a lot of infrastructure going in in the space ethereum has a lot of growing pains that it's got to get through there's a lot of effort with trying to get up scaling and all these other things that give it a value proposition as a miner, you feel compelled to be part of that ecosystem, at least understanding it to say, you know, what short of us providing a service and getting a token, what else, why are, why are we mining this network versus another? And bottom line, a lot of mining in general is we are just service providers, right? We are at, at a minimum set we're a service provider for a network and the terms of service are right there in front of us. It's real easy. We point a rig to it, we donate hash power for that, and then for that for that effort, that caught that capex and that opex cost, we're compensated in a token that happens to be worth money. It can go. It you can leave it at no further than that. That's not heartless. That's not anything else. It's just somebody built a platform and we're providing for it. You know, that's what it is, right? And then you can go a step further and try to help the ecosystem by education. That's what we try to do is try to make sure people know how to do it. Don't damage hardware, know what works, what doesn't try to cut through the BS scams. It's pretty linear. That's why I've always tried to stay very mechanical in this whole space is showing the technicals on how it functions and you can participate or you don't have to participate. It's up to everybody, right? But Understanding how the ecosystem works and how people chase it is also key. And knowing that rapid expansion in the hash power of watching the other networks and understanding, okay, what is a forecast? Everybody looks at the current and they kind of look at the past. Not a lot of people look at forward and look at what are, what do I need to look for? And do I need to pivot until you've already started spending the cost on being negative? I just saw a lot of stuff coming out this last few days with the price being where it's at. And people are like, oh, it's going to fall. It's going to fall to zero. No, it's not going to fall to zero. Of course it's not. There's a huge amount of infrastructure out there. There's a lot of people that work in the space and Ethereum. It's going to find where it makes sense for Ethereum. And that's why you get the, 
um, I think the attitudes from the development teams from Ethereum, and I'm talking specifically about Ethereum right now, but I think that's why you get the attitude you do from some of the, from Vitalik and everybody else. Um, because they, they're looking at it like I'm trying to build a platform that is going to change the world. The mining aspect of it is just the terms of service with holding up a proof of work network. And they don't feel like they owe us any other thing than that. They, they feel that. And I don't take that personally. That's why I've never came out very strong on the Ethereum development space in general on it. And I want to see their ecosystem do well. I want to see them. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered in the blockchain space. But this kind of situation that we're dealing with right now, it's just when it comes to a pricing side, guys, and the mining, it's going to find an equilibrium. And if that requires some folks with lesser power situations to power off their rigs, that's the realities of the thing because that situation that you're in right now with what your OPEX cost is. And it can, there's a math problem that we can figure out here pretty quickly of what it go, what does it need to go to toward even the operation expenses in the best scenario, it starts to become unprofitable. And that really comes down to where, like everybody right now is unprofitable. It goes to 300 terahash and the price stays where it's at. I don't care what kind of power situation you got, unless your power is free. And then you're just looking at your ROI not moving because you're not gaining any, any value. People are still gonna mine it because it's going to be profitable. You know, if Ethereum's $3, we were mining it at $3, guys, $3 Ethereum price. And the only reason why it was profitable is because you guys just seen it. That is because the network hash rate was down.